Welcome to my Days of Our Lives official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. In addition to Constantine's ultimate retribution against John, the christening is shaping up to be the biggest event in ages. All items and administrations included are autonomously picked by editors. However, the retailer may receive certain auditable data for accounting purposes and Soaps.com may receive a commission on orders placed through its retail links. Things have dialed back to a snail's speed on days of our lives and stories are beginning to languish over it. However, there might be good reason to have hope as we are by all accounts moving toward one unstable initiating that could drag around 50% of the town into it. Additionally, we may have discovered Constantine's retaliatory strategy after much consideration. Time Slither envisioned my shock when on Wednesday, the wonder that happened last Monday and begun the Friday before that with Abe and Paulina both getting relieved was alluded to by Johnny as occurring the previous evening. Although Valentine's Day has been around for a while, this has been a very long 12 hours, Lord Days. No big surprise we actually haven't seen anything on Everett, Stephanie and Jada. Without a doubt, it's been a long time for us, yet it's just been, convey the two, most likely under a day in Salem. Try not to anticipate that things should accelerate, by the same token. Evidently, Jude's initiating is tomorrow, however we will not be getting to it until next Friday, and probable won't be seeing the aftermath until the next week. We have artificially slowed things down to a crawl, and I know I'm feeling it. I'm fine with stories not being resolved as quickly as possible, and in fact, I prefer it. The Century Party, since we're on the subject of the initiating, the show has been moving toward this like it's a significant wedding. Hell, in the event that a portion of individuals who say they'll be there appear, it'll be preferred gone to over any new pre-marriage ceremony. Holding a heap of covers that should be Jude, Nicole smiles at Sloane. Sloane offers a well-mannered grin. Eric rolls up his shirt sleeve as he watches from the opposite side of the loft. So there should be something unstable occurring at it. Possibly a few things. Spoilers one week from now seem as though Holly may at long last concede that the medications were exclusively her doing and reality with regards to Jude may at last emerge. At any rate, it ought to return us once again to nice cliffhangers, you can definitely relax, I have a lot to say regarding that beneath, and give us a significant occasion that it seems like we haven't gotten in a very long time. And I'm really hoping it will be fun, if the encounter between Sloane and Nicole on Friday is any indication. Both of them are completely, wonderfully, and obliviously incompatible with one another. In the event that Jude wasn't subtly Nicole's, her entirety assuming we will be essential for one another's lives routine was somewhat disagreeable. Nicole, you don't need to be a piece of Sloane's life. There's no standard that exes should be engaged with one another's lives, particularly on the off chance that they have a background marked by cheating and their current mates aren't happy with it. Holly to the side, Nicole and Eric don't have to track down motivations to continue to circle one another. And negative, I'm not letting Eric free either here. In the recreation area, Holly and Eric grin down at Jude's carriage. Furthermore, Sloan? I searched long and hard for your remorse for kidnapping my son. Yet, actually, I haven't tracked down it. I don't think I at any point will. I nearly gagged on my espresso when that's what she said. The projection. Yes, mate. Look, I enjoyed Stefan's conversation with Chad, the good Demera. It was sweet, it was smart, I fault the scholars for making light of the way that Stefan attacked Abigail slash Gabby, and I can perceive how Stefan could be feeling caught by his decisions. As he prepares to face the consequences of his actions, he would want to make amends with the one sibling who has not completely attempted to stab him in the back. In the interrogation room, Stefan looks at a chessboard. In addition, I appreciated the fact that, despite the sadness, it appeared as though Stefan was beginning to apply some of his father's lessons. He's playing chess by and by, instead of simply responding to dangers and taking care of his own covetousness. However, when we got to the details of his strategy, we discovered that he recorded EJ admitting to assisting him escape. Therefore, what was the point of him panickingly running to Ava or allegedly drinking as he spiraled? For what reason did he act with Chad like he was saying his farewells as he supported to look up to what he's finished? About that, I have a separate theory that starts with an A and ends with a Bigale. 
He didn't record EJ coincidentally, then, in the wake of floundering in hopelessness, understand, gracious. I can accomplish something with this. He recorded EJ with an escape strategy in mind, so there was no need for him to plunge headfirst into the unknown. Furthermore, did I miss something with that chess game? Did Stefan bring his own board or did he get the Salem PDs? I'm expecting all police regions have chess sheets, normally. The following conflict one way or the other, I'm trusting when they figure out all the details about who gets what, EJ winds up with Demera and loses the head prosecutor employment. He's a complete jerk right now, but I like the idea of him running Demera, so if they can actually get him to concentrate on that, that would be great. Also, it will be far and away superior in the event that it sets up him for at whatever point Xander at long last learns he's Victor's child and assumes control over Titan. EJ faces Xander at the Salem Motel on Days of Our Lives More, the conflict that brought the Demera family together those two going head-to-head -head against one another on the corporate front could allow them both an opportunity to play filthy and embrace their more obscure selves without transforming them into capturing, lethal miscreants. Corporate thief is a superior fit and perhaps we could at last get that Demera slash Karaoke's war preparing. At least the show seemed to remember the plan that Constantine and Teresa had for the secret heir. That is, something? I realize I became weary of it for some time back and was glad for the break as Teresa zeroed in on Tate and Constantine zeroed in on John, yet long stretches of disregarding it appeared to be quite senseless. But could we please wrap it up? On the off chance that they won't show Alex in that frame of mind of job as successor or running Titan or any sort of contention among him and Xander, then there is no good reason for pushing this along. Precipice jumps last week's likeness a cliffhanger finished with John hearing Steve and Marlena talking and afterward, it sort of burned out on Monday. Gracious, John smiled at Steve apiece, however we might have gotten both of them in a battle or yelling match or something seriously energizing. John was more similar to a kicked canine who needs to apologize and hand himself over for working on something while conditioned? More, the Xander-slash-foreigner hybrid we didn't anticipate at all makes sense to me, knowing enigmatically that he did terrible things in a previous existence he doesn't recall is a certain something, however figuring out that he was liable for the passing of an honest is another. In any case, do any of us accept he really killed Katharina? By and by, I figure they ought to allow it to work out, yet I don't briefly figure it did. Marlena made a valid statement raising how handing himself over for the wrongdoing we aren't even certain he perpetrated would mean leaving his loved ones. John is acting somewhat selfishly here. Allow me to leave my family for something I don't recollect and didn't have command a while back. Come on, John, if Harris can overcome what he did last year. In the Kiriaki's living room, Constantine is facing a broken John. Marlena and Maggie notice what's more, Constantine pardoning him after John's sincere conciliatory sentiment is astonishing, likewise, I'm certain, an all-out lie, yet is it truly cliffhanger material? A genuine cliffhanger would have been Con at last utilizing that inept card to transform John into the pawn and advising him to kill his friends and family. What is his vengeance? Has he been pushing John to apologize so he can say he excuses him, then go mind? Simply joking. Devastating. Stray considerations. Can we get Johnny and Chanel a story? Anyone? For what reason are the youthful couples the most exhausting ones on the show? Arranging parties isn't a story. I truly trust this wedding trip explodes. I really hope that their Horton honeymoon isn't as bad as they think. Teresa told Constantine that Maggie might be lamenting at present, yet she's savvy and she's intense and when she gets a whiff of your conman ass, you're to AST. Could we at any point show that, please? Nicole's blinders are captivating. She tells Sloane about Holly, she would never lie. Furthermore, she refers to Holly and Tate's relationship as poisonous. Fair warning, Nicole, Holly's the harmful one. I sort of thought they planned to head off to some place with Abe having a blameworthy outlook on Paulina subsequent to reconnecting with Lexi yet it doesn't seem to be that. He appeared to move past that quick and Paulina absolutely wasn't envious, joyfully let everybody know that Abe has his own radiant assistance. The entire situation still boggles my mind. Assuming they did it to give Abe his memory back, Paulina's heart issue was inconsequential. In addition, will anyone attempt to investigate Paulina's recovery? Man, Salem specialists are bland.